That one is too light. This is too blue. This is too dark. Oh, the hips are too hipping. So I only put it on the parts that matters. That is the front. Anybody that's looking at my behind, you should not be looking at my behind. So Hello everyone and welcome to Kim Dave. My name is Priscilla. I'm an Nigerian women's wear designer based in the UK. This is DIY Queen. This is a show where I get to create the most playful, fun, elegant garments, but with a 25 pound budget. If you haven't seen episodes one, I'm going to link it on the screen and down below so you could go check that out. That was really fun to create. But in this episode, I am going to be attempting to make the most sexy, bodycon corset dress that has a silver embellishment around the hemline will i be able to make this i do not know would you be curious to find out i hope so so make sure to keep watching till the end give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it if you are enjoying this series so far leave your comments thoughts and suggestions down below and let's get into this because i'm super excited so let's head off to the fabric shop to get all the supplies that we need good morning i am off to the fabric shop today and the hope is to try and get all of the fabrics, zip, boning, lining, everything I need with the 25 pounds budget. Else I might have to simplify the dress, maybe reduce the amount of trims at the bottom. But that's like what gives the dress, you know, the jazz and the personality. But let's go and see if we find everything. I'll try and get as much as I can. Else I might try to shop for the rest online to see if I can find more affordable options there. Back here again. Back to Fabric Land. Ideally, I would want something like that. Some kind of velvet. For price. Nope. Okay. Okay, color wise, I think it's between this mint green and this duck egg. This is a cotton satin um four ninety nine then that one is a mint cotton satin hmm. what if you can't find what you're looking for but you really need to walk out with a fabric what do you do? I go online. If I can't find it in shops, I go online. I usually find that there are more options online, just that you can't touch and you can't really see it. You just hope for the best that what you shop for is what you get. That one is too light. This is too blue. This is too dark. Oh. I don't know what it was, but on this day, I was really struggling to just decide on what I wanted. I knew I wanted something kind of bluish, greenish. I wasn't just making up my mind quick enough. Eventually, I started to narrow down my options to shade off like a blue, and I think I found something that I liked. I finally decided on gray because of the silver trims to go with that one. I just pray that everything looks sensible together. Decisions, decisions. It'll have to be the gray nothing in there that would work yeah this one it's because it picks up some of the blue from that fabric but this one looks better with the lining okay that's how much i spent today that leaves me with about 14 pounds plus to get the boning and the trims how confident are you that the budget would be enough um for the particular style i chose for the second episode uh i'm a bit worried that it won't be enough to buy the kind of trims i want to go in the bottom half of the dress so i think i might end up simplifying the design in terms of like the type of embellishments i end up getting now that i'm left with roughly 15 pounds i knew i had to search the internet for a silver trim and i wanted something that dangled a little bit so it would sit at the very bottom of the dress but the prices that is the entire price of like two projects from this series. So I was like, okay, I really needed to search high and low. 
I tried different websites, different shops. I tried Amazon. I tried Etsy. I even ended up on eBay. That's how serious the search was getting. Because I knew I wanted something in silver, something with a little bit of like, you know, white stone so it would shine and it would bling as I was walking in the dress, I ended up going for a trim that met that sort of like requirement, but I could only get a meter. And that trim, one meter of that trim was like $7.49. I found that on eBay and this came from, I believe it came from China. I'm going to link all the materials I used down below for anyone who wants to check them out. And I still had to get boning to put on the front part of the dress since I want to go, you know, for that corset really snatched effect. The boning I could not get a lot of because homegirl was left with just on that eight pounds to get that so i ended up spending about 620 for two meters of boning and that came up to 13 pounds and seven pence so it was just enough to cover all of the things i needed to make this corset dress that has a drape detail on the front and the silver trim on the bottom To create the sewing patterns, I'm going to be working with these measurements here. I'm going to use mine. So if you're going to follow along this tutorial, I recommend you use yours or that of your client if you're making this for someone else. Now I'm going to go ahead to first off mark the full length of the dress, which is from like my chest down to the hemline. Because I am a short girl, I want mine to be above the knee, so it was on the shorter side. This I squared across on the neckline and on the hemline. And from the neckline, I'm marking three inches below. That is going to become my bust line. And then from the bust line to my waist is six inches, so the vertical distance for me and that i'm marking here like so and then i'm marking the vertical distance from my waist to my hip which is 10 inches these points i am squaring across so i end up with horizontal lines that i can mark the other dimensions that i need for this dress moving on to the next step i'm going to go along my neckline and mark half of my across chest measurement which was about seven inches and then along my bust line i'm going to mark a quarter of my bust measurement plus half an inch ease then i'm going to move to my waistline and mark a quarter of my waist measurement plus 1.5 inches that is the ease and the dart that will be included in that measurement along my waist and then along my hip, I'm making a quarter of my hip measurement plus half an inch ease. And I wanted the dress to be fitted around the leg but still have room to move. So my round hem measurement was 36. I divided that by four to get the width dimension for my dress. I'm just going in here to connect the sides together. I'm drawing in the side of the neckline. Then I'm drawing in the point that connects the bust to my waist and then next up the line that connects my waist to my hip and then to my hemline now i'm going to move to my bust line and mark half of my nipple to nipple measurement this is going to help me divide the entire front plan into two panels and i'm going to divide it even more because i want to have more seams so i can add the boning tunnel that this dress has I'm moving on to the side panel and I'm trying to divide it into an additional two panels. So I end up having three panels for this front plan. I'm dividing it from the neckline all the way down to the waist and to the hemline. And it's straightish around the bottom and then it goes out along the neckline. So it makes a little bit of a V. Now I'm going to shape in the front plan and I'm coming to the neckline first and marking half an inch on both sides of this particular line and then half an inch inwards on the second line and then along the waistline I'm going to try and get rid of a total of one inch from that entire waistline through the dart. To ensure it has a snatched fit around my bust I'm marking three inches underneath my bust line and that is going to become my under bust. This is going to guide me to double check all of my measurements when I have drawn in my darts so it has a nicer shape. So I'm connecting all of the points together to create the darts and this is what is going to actually help to shape the dress on my body. I say the more you really make these curves sit nicely around your bust, your waist and your hip, it just looks a lot more flattering on the body. Like I went in around the bust point to ensure that it was a lot more rounded and that I got rid of any excess measurement that would be under the bust through that waist dart. And to ensure that these last two panels on the side meet along the neckline, I'm just lifting that edge by a quarter of a centimeter, 
like so before going back in to draw in the rest of the dots on this side of the front and that is what it looks like once it's all like darted away and shaped in you should end up with three panels the middle front the sort of side front and then the piece on the side that connects to the back so how long did it take you to create the sewing patterns i say it took me about half a day because I really can't quantify it in terms of hours because I was like going on Instagram and going on TikTok and like doing other things while I was making the sewing pattern. So I would say about half a day, which would be like what, four hours and like typical work time. That's about how much it took to like draft the plan, trace off the patterns. It might be less if I remove all those extra times so I was like faffing around, but about half a day. I went ahead to trace off all of the patterns I needed for the front dress plan. This is the first one here. Added my seam allowance of a centimeter or roughly half an inch around. I repeated the same for the other two panels. Added my annotations, my grain lines as well because that would come in very handy when I have to use these patterns to actually cut onto fabric. This I would believe is like a UK size 10. That's my current body size and it's on the mini side. For the back plan, I am just going to adapt the front and the first thing I'm doing is I'm dropping the neckline to be roughly 2 inches below the bust line. That I'm going to draw as a scooped neckline so it's lower compared to the front. And then I'm just going to ensure that this dart here is straight from the neckline to about the middle point rather than have it curved the way it was on the front. On the center back of the dress, I do want to add a zip and I want to add a lace up detail on the top half of the back of the dress. And I've gone in to just draw in the curve of what I want that lacing panel to look like. So that guides me when I have to trace off the back panels of this dress. Now I've traced off those patterns, I've added my seam allowance around and I've cut them out and I ended up with three panels like I have for the front. There is a seam allowance on the center back which is scooped in on this top edge where my lacing is going to be and then it's straightish at the bottom where my zip is going to be. I have a second panel that sits next to that middle back piece and a side panel that connects to the front. All of these have a centimeter seam allowance or roughly half an inch seam allowance, my grain lines, my annotations. And I'm going to go ahead to use these patterns to cut my dress. My fabric was literally just enough. Like that one meter really came through. And I'm just going in here to cut out all of the pieces I need for the dress. I just cut it in such a way that I cut a pair in one go. So I don't have to like cut again. Once I cut the main dress, I went ahead to cut the lining with the same patterns. And then I also cut a little extra more for the straps which is help, going to help me make the lace of detail then i cut a seven by five inches rectangular piece that is going to help me make the modesty panel that is going to be behind the lace and then i cut two pairs of straps to make the lace of detail as i mentioned earlier on and a long rectangular piece that is going to make the front bow detail that was the extra fabric i had that rectangular piece so i just kind of like finessed it to make it work for this project People of God will finally reach sewing this dress. <laughs> I, I swear this dress turned out to be a lot more challenging than I thought it would be. And the first thing in terms of sewing I'm doing is I'm joining all of the dress panels together and I've just pinned everything in place. Normally I would do front first, back later. I just pinned it all so I know once I take this to my machine and I stitch up all of the vertical seams, I can go ahead to fit it on. So I've quickly popped on the dress just to check if I like the shape and the fit. And this is what it looks like. I like the neckline because it's open at the back because that's where the lace up is going to be. The lace up is going to be there, hence why it's open. But aside that, <laughs> the hips are too hipping, so that needs to either come in or I take away from the back. But I just think it's a bit too pew pew on both sides. This looks really pretty. I just need to stitch in the boning tunnels against the lining. So far, so good. Another change I made prior to this fitting was I cut an additional panel that sits right on the center back because I just wanted my waist hip area to have even more room. And this 
I've added on the back panel and I left one edge of it open for the zip to sit. So aside that, I'm going to go in again and shaping the hip of the dress even more. So it's a little bit more A-line and it just sits more naturally on the body. After making all those changes, I cut out my lining, stitched everything together the same way I did for the main dress. And I'm going to be joining the lining and the dress together along the neckline. This I've just pinned in place and I'm going to be sewing all around the neckline and leaving the back edges open for my hoops to do my straps. This is what the neckline of the dress is looking like and I'm going to make my way to the top edge of the back and I've made these short straps. I ended up with four pairs, one pair for each side and I'm just folding and pegging them along the back edge and I'm going to use the lining to actually secure those hoops in place. That I'm going to stitch on like this just to hold everything together. I'm going to do this on the left and on the right hand side. If you don't want to do this method, you can also do the method of attaching eyelets and then lacing up the eyelets if you don't want to do the loops like I've done here. I don't have the eyelet puncher thing, which is why I'm actually doing this method, but I think it's about time I invest in that eyelet, eyelet puncher because I think that would come in very handy for corsets, style dresses, or any design I want to have eyelets too. Now I'm going to move on to sewing my boning tunnels along the front and side seams. I have added some pins just to prevent the piece from moving around and it, it, it was still moved but I just tried my best not to panic. So I stitched on both sides along the front seam so you know that one along the bust the one that you will use to divide the side panel and then the side seam. I made boning tunnels and it stopped around my waistline so they didn't go all the way down to the hip line now i'm going to go ahead to pass the boning into the tunnels that i have made and this is between the main dress and the lining so that way i'm trapping the boning between those two layers my budget did not allow me to buy bias tape which is how i normally would create my boning tunnels but this actually worked and this turned out really nicely after passing the boning through i'm going in to just sew the end close and this is what the dress is looking like so far on the bottom edge of the dress, I'm going to go in to attach my invisible zip on both sides. And once I was done stitching in the zip, I'm going to sew the rest of that back seam closed. So that finishes off the main dress on this side. After doing this, I went ahead to give my dress a nice press and this is what it looks like. I still have the lining open and the lining is how I'm actually going to conceal the zip on the inside of the dress. I'm going to fold the lining in such a way that I tuck away the zip teeth on the right side of the dress and I'm going to sew the edges of the lining and the main dress along the edge of the zip tape just to hide away the raw edge of the fabric. I'm going to do this on both sides and the same way I did for the zip, stitch up the bottom of that back hemline. This needs a good press. When you turn it inside out, it looks really nice and tidy as well. And I'm going to the hemline just to roll and sew it to round it off. What was the thing that you were most concerned about while you were creating this piece? I wanted the fit to be right because it's such a fitted dress that if anything is off, if any of the seams are not straight, especially with the boning tunnels in the front, if, they, if that seam is not straight or if the stitch where the boning goes into is not straight, it's really obvious. So I was very careful when I was like joining everything together, I'm creating those boning tunnels because I do want to wear this dress. The second to last step is to add the drape detail on the front of the dress and this I actually had no idea what I was doing at first. I played around with a few different designs until I ended up with a detail that kind of looked like a bow when it was tucked behind the neckline and then it was pulled up in the middle and it was just like a very happy accident. So this is the drape that I ended up with. This looks like something, I don't know, Tinkerbell would wear. It just looked so cool. I've just held it down with some pins at this point and I'm actually going to stitch this by hand because when it comes to drape details like this, I just think it's just a lot more carefully done when it's stitched by hand because then you have a lot more control 
on where the stitches are going to be and you can hide them away if you want to so i'm stitching it along the side underneath the arms along the neckline and then right up the center front where that rouge up detail is if i had an extra five pounds to spend i could have actually put a little bit of the silver trim on the neckline i thought it would have looked really really nice next up here i'm just adding the modesty panel this i cut as two separate pieces stitch them together and then i have nice finished edges and i'm going to hand tack it on just one side of the back so when i have the dress on and i've laced up the detail on the back it actually conceals my skin and you don't see anything that is underneath of the lacing detail on the back of the dress <music> After what seemed like an eternity, I finally received the silver trim in the mail. This is what it looks like. I'll insert a video of what it looks like up close. It's a pretty nice weight. It's not too heavy, so it will not pull the dress down. I think my only concern is that it doesn't feel like it will go around the entire bottom of the dress. So I'll only put it on the parts that matters. That is the front. So I am just going to pin this down to check i think it might go around the front and then maybe slightly to the side we'll see we'll see we'll see this i'll have to stitch in by hand though because <laughs> i'll just break all my machine needles if i attempt to sew the silver trim down with my machine like i would break my machine so this would have to be hand tacked which is what i'm going to do today so I'm just checking to see, it actually goes almost all the way around. There's just a little bit at the back that is open, but that's fine. Anybody that's looking at my behind, you should not be looking at my behind. I would just use some clips to hold them down and just tack it by hand. I think that that's my best bet in all honesty. Using these small plastic clips, I am just spreading the silver trim along the entire hemline of the dress this actually almost went all the way around i think i just needed like an inch or two inches more to go all the way but it doesn't look too bad since it sits at the back i'm going to go ahead to hand stitch this onto the hemline of the dress to finish it off summer wedding dress like a, a wedding guest because it's such like a soft blue color um, it has the silver trims on the bottom so to make a very nice occasion wear so maybe like weddings or bachelorette party something a bit more dressy I would say lined up is only my sister's bridal show I don't have anything else but we don't know what the year is going to bring so I have a nice dress I just need to find an event to wear it in now feels like butter man quite see-through but i think if i back it with this one i get free zip <laughs> zip on the house <laughs> the back of the dress is going to my open i just know the african aunties <laughs> are going to have a field day oh god i'm in love oh 